Marco back here then. G'day everybody, how are you going? It is very good to see you. Tonight, we're gonna go out with this, the 50 mil 1.2. Get some shots in the dark. The full review is coming, let's go. Now, I've got my keys, keys I've got, there they are. All right, walk this way. As we put this 50 mil review together, the 1.2, of course, it's very interesting that Sony have now just released their 50 1.2. So it's an appropriate time to be talking about it, I think. Let's uh, look at some... Uh... They look gorgeous, you know what? Let's look at some bright lights over here. There are a lot of things that I love about this lens. Uh, some would say one thing not to love is the size and the weight of the most recent 50 millimeter 1.2s, Canon, Sony, Nikon. This is the largest and it's the heaviest with the Sony being around 800 grams and this one is 1,200 grams, give or take roughly. So it is a lot bigger. But is that size and weight worth the outcome? Well, one thing we know for sure about this lens is it, for video and for maybe some stills work, there is no focus breathing and that's a good thing. And optically, this thing is a dream. We'll keep going this way. And let's just, uh, let's just stop for a moment and talk about tonight. This night here, it is a balmy probably 25 degrees. And there's certain nights that I love. Some of them is a night like this where it's raining or it's cold and foggy. But a night like this really inspires you to get out and to shoot. And the city is coming back to life. And I hope wherever you are in the world, you'll be able to come back to life soon too. Because, you know, inspiration in photography is one of kind of the most important parts, is it? Like, why am I even out here with a camera unless I'm inspired? Like, the gear can be amazing, but it won't go anywhere. It'll never leave the house unless you're inspired. So choosing the night, choosing the light, choosing the weather, it's all super important. It's a red light, we'll just wait. We're going that, we're going towards the sunset. Are you gonna come with me towards the sunset? Let's go.
What a lens. We can see with that opening that this lens stuns. And I wanted to show you some portraiture. This is a three quarter day I did a couple of weeks ago with a corporate client shooting on the streets of Melbourne. And as we can see here, it's the 50 mil at 0.2 of a second, 0.2, so one fifth. I think that's what that is at f 1.4. And we can just see a beautiful quality to this lens, the way it deals with the background and even at such a slow shutter speed and we're here at 200%, we can see the gentleman's jaw, like he's moving, of course he has to keep still, but eyeballs are tight, in, tightly in focus. And I don't mind uh, the notion that you cannot have blurry areas, I don't agree with or out of focus areas anyway, it's part of making an image more interesting and more dynamic. There's more to life than just straight up sharpness. But in this case, or well, this is what this lens provides, if you know how to use it, is you can have a mixture of this just beautiful, dreamy, cinematic background, but an ultra sharp image that delivers what you need. Everybody looks amazing. And for an extraordinarily easy setup and shoot, there's no external lighting. This is just photographed as is in the world, on the street. I think this is a very powerful outcome. So again, to reiterate, we're at 50 mil, 1.4, one fifth of a second, 100 ISO. And we're on the Z6 II here. I'm pretty sure it's the Z6 II. Let's just double check that. Yes, it is. The colors are amazing. Everything about it is is ridiculous. And this lens, I think, is, is it, it performs. As long as you know how to use it, it can just give you these really high quality results. Now, I'm theorizing, why does it give you this medium format sort of outcome? And I think it's more than just depth of field. And here is another image where we're not at 1.4, we're at 2.8, one eighth of a second. And it just still has something about it. And I think it's got something to do with how it renders color and contrast. And just obviously there's some optical magic with all of those different layers and lenses and coatings that Nikon use. And that's what it's all about. You're not just buying a 50mm 1.2 for light gathering, but there's a lot of technology and science into creating a certain look. And as I've said, this really has a medium format look to me. Here's another image shot in really low light. This was very low light. Now I am using the Loom Cube panel here, the Panel Pro, to create this blue light, but it's not overly bright. And again, we can just see we're at 2.2, 1 60th of a second, handheld, 50 mil, 100 ISO. There we are at 100%. Absolutely rock solid, sharp. Background looks gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. And just, just, just look, look at this separation and frame. Absolutely amazing. So as a portrait lens, Absolutely no question from my perspective that this thing nails it. This shoot we're looking at here is the very first time I used it as a portrait lens. So I'd never photographed a human with it before. So this was somewhat experimental and didn't quite know exactly how it was going to turn out. But these results from my perspective are stunning in the regards to light, light rendition, the way it's capturing the light, how the background looks, every single part of this is amazing. Now, for some reason, Capture One's not really rendering that until we bring it in closer. But again, you can just see how sharp it is. Now, again, very difficult dealing with a very short depth of field here. I'm standing and swaying. The subject is standing and swaying. And it was very, very dark. So to get results like these, amazing. And then in a more standard setting with lots of light, here we are shooting 100 ISO, 1 500th of a second f1.3 and this has just bounced light off the table it looked really nice it made everybody look fantastic and there we have it it's just it just delivers and gives great results so there's people we can do people
some of those images that we saw in the intro. And I just want to show you there's nothing special going on here. This is the 50mm lens. We're on the Z7. As you can see here, latest version of the software. Yes, I've made a few adjustments. They're pretty minor, I think. But again, I just love this background. And this here was where I was trying to slow the tram down. This is a tram here. Slow the tram down enough to make it blur. Still shoot at 1.2, but have an exposure that I wanted. So I went into the extended low ISO and that is why it says ISO 31 and as we can see it works absolutely fine. I didn't have an ND filter so that was the only thing I could do so don't forget that as an option. You can continue to drop your ISO below the base ISO and the umbrella. Some people like this one, some people like this one. It's hard to choose. I like them both for different reasons. This is one quarter of a second handheld 64 ISO wide open this, they, these are stars here. This is the wall. We're in at 100% at a quarter of a second, handheld, wide open. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good result considering everything. Just love that you can go out and do that. I mean, it's full nighttime, as we can see by the sky. Love, love the results. This is another ultra low light one, quarter of a second, handheld, wide open. I was trying to get this bicycle hub in focus. And it was way, way darker than what it, like it was, you know, almost pitch black. And we can see there it's looking really good to be able to pull this stuff off, even to be able to get focus, which was quite tough, but I got the shot. You just have to hang in there for a second. Yeah, all of these images are absolutely beautiful from my perspective. I just, I, I love them all. 30th of a second, 1.2, 50 mil. Just, just love, love it. There's, there's nothing there's nothing to not like about what I'm seeing here. The out of focus areas look gorgeous. I've done very little to the file. If we look over here, I've brought up the shadows a bit. I've brought up the exposure a bit. I've brought down the highlights in order to see a bit more of this sign and brought up the saturation a bit because I just think the color's great. Really nice. And capturing rain. Oh, I love it. Again, beautiful, beautiful image. Love this image. Little, little tiny bit of flare. I want a little bit of flare. I don't want that to completely disappear in lenses. Even so, this, hand, this lens handles it amazingly. And this shot here, I love this shot for everything. I love this crazy over-the-top logo. I love this crazy lighting. The rain is falling. This guy's walking. This is like a perfect shot from my perspective. We're at a 50th of a second, 1.250 millimeter on the 50 mil. So what can I tell you? Well, I, I, I can just keep showing you more and more amazing shots from this lens. I mean, it just, it just never disappoints. Take the time to get it right. Again, look at this lovely, 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 gorgeous rendition. Let's go back to the studio. How do we sum up this 50 millimeter 1.2 lens? I've had this lens since December and it's been an absolute joy. I take it with me whenever I'm doing professional work. I take it with me whenever I'm doing my own streetscape photography. It is an astounding piece of hardware. And for a person who's never owned a 1.2 or a 50 mil 1.2, I'm really enjoying the new Horizons. The closest I've had to this in the past in the F mount has been the 24 1.4, the 50 mil 1.4 and the 85 mil 1.4. Now the 50 mil 1.4 was not an expensive lens for some reason and it was not a great lens, that Nikon F lens. I can't remember the designation, I will write it here. It's probably something like 15 to 20 years old at this point but for some reason Nikon sort of made it more of a nifty 50 rather than an, a high end, which they replaced with the 58 more recently. And that, to the best of my understanding, is a far better lens. It's also a very expensive lens, but the Z mount gives us more than what the F mount ever could. And now we have a lens that optically, from my perspective, is, it's, it's, look, it's not perfect. No lens is perfect, but chromatic aberration, flaring, fringing, ghosting, all of these things are utterly suppressed. They are really suppressed. Now, for some of those things, depending on exactly how the light's playing and what your depth of field is and exactly uh, how far things are in and out of focus, and there's, there's, there's literally millions of kind of data points of 
how this could work even within one frame with a tree in it and the sun behind it. You still can have it occurring, but it is suppressed so much that it's pretty hard to see, even in the absolute toughest of conditions. So 50 mil, it's not for everybody. Some people will be preferring the upcoming 85, which we think is gonna be a 1.2. Hopefully it's gonna be a 1.2. And uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, I wouldn't mind all of the five primes being 1.2s. I didn't necessarily mean exactly the same focal lengths, but some people have already agreed with me that maybe a 20 1.2, certainly an 85 1.2, maybe a 35 1.2, and obviously we could m potentially go beyond 85, although that might be a mighty large lens. But a set of 1.2 primes in the quality that Nikon are making this 50 mil would be very exciting. The suppression of all those image abnormalities is fantastic with this lens. Sharpness, even wide open, seems to be corner to corner. In regards to vignetting, I actually haven't tested it by turning off all of the auto corrections. I actually add vignetting to some of my images. So either way, that's not a big deal for me. It's such a massive lens that you would think it's probably dealing with that stuff very well. I'd love if someone could help me digitally 3D print a mount and a mount for this Z lens to allow us to see the image circle. I'd like to be able to test some of the lenses I have to see whether the image circle would be large enough for that small medium format that we talked about in multiple videos in the past. If any lens might be possible of that, I think this could be one of the lenses. It's possible. And if I was Nikon, you'd make all of these expensive primes or as many as you can interchangeable between DX, APS-C, 35 mil and small medium format. That's what I would do. I'd love to be able to test that. So if anyone's got a bit of engineering skill and knows how to make a little rig to help us work out the image circle, we can actually answer this question once and for all. But Matt Granger, he made a video showing that his F-mount 200mm f2 lens works fine on the GFX 100S. So that's an example of an F-mount lens working on that sensor. So if an F-mount lens can work, I think it goes without saying that some of these can as well. So this lens has a lot of potential. It's got two focusing motors in it. It's got a lot of glass, it's got nine aperture blades, you know, all those numbers. I'm not really into that stuff. The Z system is only gonna to continue to improve from a focusing perspective. I recently used this for two commercial shoots, all portraiture and people. Of course, you've seen some of that in this video. And even focusing in very low light, it handled it. Now, right now, today, yes, Nikon's focusing system is not as fast as Canon and Sony. But that's mostly around tracking and keeping up with subjects that are moving a lot. But with static subjects or slow moving subjects, I've had no problems at all. And actually when I was shooting kids playing basketball, the system was completely keeping up. From my perspective, the more I real world test these cameras and the focusing systems, the more I stand behind the statement that in real world usage, this camera is going to fit 95 if not more, percent of people's use cases. This lens is spectacular. It's near perfection. It's easy to use. The color rendition is outstanding. The IBIS works super well on the bodies we have to date. And I can't wait to see this lens working on the Z9 and any other cameras that Nikon bring out soon. The more power that they give a lens like this, the more it will excel. So is the 50 mil for you, this particular 50 mil? Well, I can, I, can, I can absolutely say to you that the 50 mil 1.8 is an outstanding lens and it's very similar in a lot of ways. Does it suppress ghosting and chromatic aberration as much? I'm not sure, I haven't done a side-by-side -side test, but I have used that lens how I normally would and I have not seen it overtly getting anything wrong. I would say they are similar, but this one might be a bit ahead because they've put more time and effort into all those coatings. But image-wise, you are getting an equally fabulous image all the way down to 1.8. Of course, you pay more, and that, that absolutely comes down to how important that ultra-short depth of field look is to you. To me, it is something I have used my entire career. So it's important to me. 
I've always bought fast primes for exactly this reason. But they have always felt a little bit compromised due to chromatic aberration and just not being super sharp everywhere on the edges and so on. This lens addresses all of that and more relative to the F system and relative to its much older siblings. To reiterate, the 50mm 1.8 is an excellent lens and it will suit most people and obviously it's much smaller, much lighter and much cheaper. But the one argument I can give you for buying this lens is really, I can see a kind of medium format sort of look coming out of it. I'm not sure what optical magic Nikon are employing. If you love short depth of field, it'd either be this one or the 85 or perhaps something longer. But what's amazing about this, as we've seen in this video, you can use it for portraiture, you can use it for streetscape, you can use it in different locations. You can use it for landscape as well. And I could not end this video without talking about a little bit of legacy, a little bit of history. And here it is right here. We have two of Nikon's 50mm 1.2s. This is them. They're quite different. This one on the D4 and this one here on the Z6 II. This one here is obviously a manual 1.2 there is such a significant difference between these two 50mm lenses and look there's a very big difference between the results they achieve and there's a very big difference between their prices. This one is three to four decades old and well this one's brand new it's only been out three to four months. What I wanted to show here is that Nikon has come a very long way. A very long way indeed. I'm not an engineer so I don't really understand why they're so different but I can tell you that this one is astounding and the dollars that you spent are dollars very well spent. And if you're after that 1.2 look with a little bit of a medium format vibe about it as I've said there's some magic here and I think we all believe in just a little bit of magic don't we JK Rowlings? So please tell me, are you going to get yourself one of these? If you've got one, how much are you enjoying it? And are you hanging out for an 85 1.2 or a 35 or a 24 1.2? I'm going to put a poll up asking which 1.2 lenses you would like to see next. So good to see you, as always. Oh my goodness, it's great to have you here. And if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, do share this video, like it really helps the channel and if you'd like to watch over 300 episodes right now just look down there all right i look forward to seeing you very soon thanks for being here the, the 51.2 it's an amazing lens and, and it might be a lens that changes your life it's changed my life if you've never had a lens like this so i just want to say thank you so much for being here today it's an absolute